This is our second video about solving equations, hence the part two in the title. Um, you might want to write down the subtitle there in parentheses. We're talking about equations with variables on both sides and applying these solving equations. Uh, by uh, applications, we mean word problems. So we want to make sure that you know how to solve word problems by solving equations when necessary. And here are your steps. Start by defining your unknown, your variable. Right? What are you trying to find? And what letter are you going to use to represent that? Uh, step two, when appropriate, draw a picture. So all those geometry problems, sketch a diagram, label the information that you know. Step three, write your equation to represent whatever given information you have. Step four, solve that equation. And then step five, check your answers and make sure that you put your appropriate units on the answers. For example, Let's say you have $500 from selling tickets that are $10 each. How many tickets have you sold? Well, let's start by defining our variable. I want to know how many tickets have I sold. So that's what I need to represent with a variable. I'm going to use capital T, and I'm going to define that as number of tickets sold. Notice I'm being very specific in my variable definition. Not really appropriate to draw a picture here, so let's go ahead and write an equation. I have a total of $500 after selling T number of tickets at $10 each. Well, $10 per ticket times the number of tickets should give me that $500 total. Now that I've written the equation, let's solve. 10 and T have been multiplied together to undo that. I need the opposite operation of dividing by 10 on both sides. So now I know T equals 50. Check my answers. Let's see if that makes sense. 10 times 50 does equal 500. Do I need units? No, but it would be better to say 50 tickets sold, not measurement units, but units in what I am talking about. Second example, the perimeter of a rectangle is 268 feet. Its length is 34 feet more than its width. What is the length? So let's uh, draw a picture here to represent. Now with rectangles, it can be tricky. Which side is the length? Which side is the width? It doesn't really matter. We know that the area is 268 feet. Ooh, I should say, sorry, perimeter is 268 feet. And its length is 34 feet more than its width. So I like to call this side the length. So it's 34 feet longer than the width. That makes sense. If this is the width, this length is 34 feet longer than the width. So now let's write an equation to represent what exactly we're doing here. We found a perimeter of 268 feet. And how do we find perimeter? Well, we add the length and the width together. And then we double that amount. So. I can simplify here in my parentheses. W plus W is 2W plus 34. Now I can distribute my 2, 4W plus 68. Good. Now that I've got this, I can isolate the variable S post 68 on both sides. My variable is multiplied by 4, so to undo that, I divide by 4. And I find that W is equal to 50. I check my answer. Wait a minute. W is equal to 50. That's the width. I want to know the length. I'm going to have to go back and do a little bit more work. I want to know how long this side is. So W plus 34 is the same as 50 plus 34, which is 84. And I include my units of feet. And we can check that. 50 plus 84 plus 50 plus 84. Do your math. Yes, that adds up to 268. The alternative is that I could have set this problem up better from the beginning. Remember, you should start by defining your variable right away. I want to know the length. I want to know L for the length of the rectangle in feet. Include units when it is appropriate. So now when I label my diagram, this is L. I don't want to call this side W. I haven't labeled a W. I haven't defined a W. But I know that the length is 34 feet more than the width. So the opposite, the width is 34 less feet than the length. 
I still know my perimeter is 268 feet. So I can do a similar process, but with a slightly different setup. I need to add together my length and width. When I do that, I get 2L whoops, plus negative 34. Since I accidentally wrote my plus, I know minus is the same thing as plus negative. And when I distribute 4L plus negative 68, well, how do I do the opposite of plus negative? Remember, I want this to go away so that I can work on isolating my variable. So the opposite of plus negative is actually going to be plus a positive. I'm going to add a 68 to both sides so that I find that 4L is 336. My last step is going to be to depot by 4. And I again get that L is equal to 84. I remember to add my units. But this way, when I solve for L, I know that that's the answer versus earlier when I had to take my answer and do more math to it because the answer to the equation was not the answer to the question they were asking me. Your turn. Do now number one. A rectangle is seven centimeters long. Its width is increased by three centimeters, and the new area is 56 square centimeters. What was the original width? Let's see how you did. So I'm looking for the width. I'm going to define that. W is the width in centimeters. When I draw my rectangle, right, it's seven centimeters long. The original width was three. Now notice I just said the original width. I realize I really should be more specific in my variable definition. W is the original width. That's what we're looking for after all. The width of this rectangle is W plus three. And I know the area is 56 square centimeters. So area of a rectangle, length times width. Length times width gives me area. When I distribute, I get 7w plus 21 equals 56. Subtract 21 from both sides so that I find that 7w is equal to 35. Last but not least, depot by 7, w is equal to 5. Let's check. 7 times 5 plus 3 is 8. 7 times 8 is 56. That looks correct. I make sure that I include my units on my answer. So my width would have started off at 5 centimeters. Now, in these problems, we had to do some simplifying before we actually got to solving. And it wasn't that bad. We could use the skills we've learned before about how to combine like terms, about how to distribute. But what if there are terms with variables on both sides of the equation? I can't combine terms together if they're on opposite sides of the equation. But I also can't isolate a variable if there are multiple variables floating around. I need to be able to combine those like terms together. And in order to do so, I need to use the pose in order to get all of those terms with variables on the same side of the equation. So that way you can combine those like terms and then continue solving. Here, 3x plus 2 equals 7x minus 18. How am I supposed to isolate the variable when I have two terms with variables and they're not together where I can add them up? I need to get them on the same side so that I can add them up. My recommendation is always to move over the smaller term. Um, in this case, 3x is smaller than 7x, so I want to move over the 3x. I need to do it the same way that I've moved over other numbers in the past by using the pose and doing opposite operations. Since this is a positive 3x here being added to things, I need to subtract 3x from both sides of my equation because 3x minus 3x, that's going to cancel out and leave me with 2 on the left-hand side of the equation. But whatever I do to the left side, I also do to the right. 7x minus 3x is 4x and minus 18 just gets brought down because I'm not doing anything with that yet. 
Now, this looks like one of our two-step equations that we're familiar with. So I'm going to work up through SMEG, as Ms. Huerta calls it. I'm going to undo my adding and subtracting first. The opposite of minus 18 is plus 18. That gives me 20 equal to 4x. Now I need to undo the multiplication by dividing. That tells me x equals 5. I can check this just like we've done before. Fill in your value of x in parentheses into the original equation and see if the math works out to be equal like it's supposed to. 3 times 5 is 15 plus 2 is 17. 7 times 5 is 35 minus 18. That's also 17, so these are equal. It checks out my answer x equals 5 appears to be correct. Take a look at this side. 12 minus 4x equals 2x plus 24. So I want to move over the smaller term. Which of these is the smaller variable term? It might be tempting to say the 2x, but that's not actually the smaller one. The smaller one is this minus 4x, right? We can underline it, put this little uh, thing around it here so that we remember that minus sign goes with the 4x. If it helps, we can remember that subtraction means the same thing as plus negative. So if it helps you to rewrite it, feel free. And maybe that makes it a little bit clearer that this negative 4x is going to be smaller than the 2x. So that's the one I want to move over. How am I going to move over a minus 4x? Well, I'm going to add 4x to both sides, giving me 12 equal to 6x plus 24. And again, now I have a two-step equation, so it should be a little bit more obvious what I need to do to solve. I need to undo the addition by subtracting, giving me negative 12 equal to 6x, then undo the multiplication by dividing, so negative 2 is equal to x. I can check that. 12 minus 4 times negative 2, and 2 times negative 2 plus 24. Well, 12 minus 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. Oh, but minus a negative becomes plus, and I get 20. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 24. That also equals 20. It all equals out. Everything's good. My answer is correct. Last one, negative 3x equals 5x minus 8. If I look at these two terms with variables that are on opposite sides of the equation, and I followed the rule that I just told you a couple of minutes ago, we would want to move over the negative 3x. However, like uh, most rules, this rule has an exception. In this case, it's actually going to make more sense for us to move over the 5x. So that way I can isolate it over here on the left side. If I move this negative 3x over here, that's fine. I can do that. But then it's not actually getting isolated. It's over here with this minus 8. But instead, if I move over the 5x, now I've got negative 8x on the left, and I'm just left with the minus 8 on the right. So I'm a lot closer to my solution than it would have been the other way around. Go ahead and depot by negative 8 on both sides, telling me that x equals 1. And I can check that. Does negative 3 times 1 equal 5 times 1 minus 8? Well, this side equals negative 3. 5 minus 8 also equals negative 3. That equals out. My answer is correct. Now it's your turn to try. Do now number 2. Hey, look, it's another little happy cloud. You should be used to that by now. Two parts, A and B. Pause it and work them out. Let's see how you did. Between these two, negative 5n is the smaller of the two. I'm going to move that one over. When I do, I need to make sure to bring down minus 10. So uh, notice here, I am adding 5n. It is not because of this subtraction sign. It is because of this negative sign in front of the 5n. This minus goes with the 10, and it comes down with it. I continue to isolate the variable by subtracting 8 from both sides. Divide by 6, and equals negative 3. If you haven't checked it, you should, but that's your answer. Here, wait a minute, now I have three terms that all have a k. I still need them all to be on the same side together. Since there are already two over here on the left, it seems to make the most sense to bring this one over on the left-hand side also. 
Uh, it doesn't really matter where you line this one up, but since this is already a positive coefficient in front of this k, it seemed to make a lot of sense to me to put the other positive coefficient along with it. So I get negative 23k plus 17 plus 20k equal to 2. But now I can combine these like terms, and if it helps, rearrange and put them side by side before you do that. Negative 23k plus 20k, that's negative 3k. SPO, you're 17. So negative 3k equals negative 15. Then divide by negative 3, k is equal to 5. How'd you do?